morning. Welcome to Morning Moments. You never know where Morning Moments is going to take me. I, I've interviewed people in Uganda and uh, in the Philippines and England. And now I go to Cow's Pins, South Almond. Carolina. Cow Pins. Cow Pins. Cow Pins. Okay. Uh, South Carolina. He's going to tell you about that, about the name, hopefully a little bit. Uh, I have a, a brother, uh, Randy Spencer, that's with us at For Morning Moments. He is with the King James Boys. They are a bluegrass group, and I, I, I just love all genres of music, and, and uh, it's great to have a bluegrass band being represented. And uh, Randy, thank you for joining me this morning for Morning Moments. It's an honor to be here. Appreciate you having us. And the uh, first time we've talked, but I appreciate it. Good. You guys are on the road a lot. Looks like you are in the road now with in your car. So uh, let me ask you, uh, what do you do and why do you do it? Well, I am a uh, bluegrass gospel musician, singer, and I've been doing that for a long time. I grew up in church uh, singing, grew up in school singing, my family sang, uh, a lot of people around me sang, and uh, in church, started out as just a church group singing with a bunch of my friends we grew up with and started this group, the King James Boys, in 1994, Father's Day of 1994, wow. again, with just a bunch of guys that went to church with me, and um, man, we just wanted to sing. We, we needed some special singing at the church. We loved bluegrass and southern gospel music and uh, got together and started playing and singing, and it just started snowballing from there. People started calling us had no intentions of traveling uh, or, you know, anything like that, but it started snowballing from there. We started playing, um, you know, other churches, nursing homes, revivals, uh, things of that nature. And then, of course, a natural progression, it just started getting a little bigger and bigger. Now we travel all over the country, really. Uh, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't reached all 50 states, but do a lot of traveling, just singing and playing uh, bluegrass gospel music. We write some of our stuff. Some of the people send us uh, music uh, or songs to sing. And uh, we, um, we're we just doing it for, I mean, we're still doing it for the same reason. We're trying to do it for the Lord. We feel like that's what he wants us to do. And we just want to be a blessing to other people. You you came to the Lord at an early age. Is that correct? I did when I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Sure did. And uh when it comes to bluegrass, what sets bluegrass apart from Southern gospel? Well, I would say uh, bluegrass music is all live played music. You know, we all play our own instruments. It's all acoustic music. Nothing's plugged up or plugged in. You play in front of a microphone. What you get is what you get. I uh, love Southern gospel music, but a lot of times they're playing soundtracks and have some extra harmonies with them, <laughs> which I love it, and a lot of my friends do it. But uh, with bluegrass, what what you hear coming out of them microphones is what you get. And there's a different kind of a different blend too with the bluegrass with the harmonies. Oh yeah, yeah. There's there's a real most of the most of the songs are either trios or quartets, and uh, you know you don't have a lot of stacking harmonies. It's it's a lead baritone tenor bass or a lead baritone tenor. And uh, that's the way we still do it. We still do it. Just like so, the Founding Fathers of Bluegrass. Yeah, and, he, and although there is a bass line, you don't hear that bass line in, in Bluegrass like you do in quartet as much, right? Well, normally. Normally, normally. you would. When people, see, this is the thing about Bluegrass is people kind of revert back to Bill Monroe and some of the old time. Yeah. And I love it. That's what I was raised on. But we, we structure our bluegrass more Southern gospel harmonies. We do have a bass singer that's pronounced. Pronounced, okay. And, you know, it's like any other music. You could look at the roots of that music, but it also, it's progressive. So it, through the years, it's, there's, the sounds has changed, and everybody takes on their own, their right. own flavor of that as well, right? That's right. What kind of instruments do you have uh, playing on your? Well, we have the guitar. We have the mandolin, the banjo, the bass. Uh, we do have some dobro. He's not always playing with us on stage, uh, but we have a dobro on our CDs and we have a fiddle player in the band. The fiddle uh -huh. player is the bass singer. Uh -huh. Good. So uh, we, we, have a full, we have a full quartet and a full band. Good, good. And uh, let me ask you, go back to the why a little bit. 
why would you want to travel all over the nation and all over to do this? What, what, what's, what's, your, what's your motivation? What's your purpose? Well, again, we didn't start out thinking we would do that. This just, just, just uh, happened. And what we've seen was people were loving the music and loving the message of the music. And we just feel like that's our way to spread God's word. That's why we're traveling to Texas. That's why we go to Arkansas. Um, some of the people know us and want to hear us. Some of the people don't, and we're giving out the word. Uh, they, they don't even know it, but they're going to hear it. Yeah. And uh, that's our way of reaching to us, the nation. And there is something to be said in this day and age of, of music that is, is somewhat canned in some ways, this track music. And, and then there's a, we understand that the need for that in some ways. But there's something to be said when you, when, even as children, you look at, you see those instruments on stage and you see them. That really draws a, a different a kind of attention, doesn't it? I am convinced. I'm convinced. I've, I've played with a lot of different people. I've, I've played with Southern Gospel groups. I've played, you know, whatever. There is something special about live music played on stage. Yeah. There's just something special about it. It draws people. People that don't even like bluegrass or people that don't even like Southern gospel. When they hear it, they're drawn to it. Yeah. I've seen it over and over. And and uh, it, it is. It's very addictive. Uh, I, I mean, I'm uh, 28 years into this and I'm still traveling and singing. So yeah. it has some kind of pulling power. Yeah. And it, there is something to be said about watching that music and, and right. sitting well, there and watching them play that instrument yeah i've told uh, i tell people all the time tell the guys in the band um i'm either going to be sitting at home on the porch playing or i'm going to be out in front of people playing yeah yeah it's it's just something that you do isn't it right it's uh you know uh as much as you know you get tired and things happen you say ah uh, you know you get tired and you'll be home for a week and you don't have anything to do and you you find yourself playing the guitar in the yeah. living room or in the bedroom or on the porch. So I'm going to be playing one way or the other. Right. And singing. When, when people come to hear the message, what is it that you say at the end when the, to, to help them make that, that last commitment of, of coming to Christ? What's the important thing that you share with them? Well, normally, let me tell you this. We, we have a, a song that we all, all, 97% of every singing we do, we end with a song called Mercy and Grace. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the Lord's mercy and grace we're even here today. And I'm alive, that you're alive, that we're doing this interview, that we get to play and sing. Yeah. And that, that's the message that we bring across. We hope, you, we hope you know the Lord. That's maybe why you're here. You may be here just to hear music. But we're doing this song and we're singing here we're going to have fun, have fun while we do it, but there's a reason why I'm doing it. I'm trying to let you know what the Lord's done for me and uh, what he can do for you. I'm so glad that God doesn't give us what, he des what we deserve. Man, we'd all be in very bad shape. We'd be in bad shape. Very he, bad shape. God's mercy is giving us what we need. and that, His mercy that, and grace is just unbelievable. We, we're yeah. breathing today. If he just you know he's a merciful father and he's all knowing if he just forgot to, to let us breathe today we'd be dead yeah he don't forget mm -hmm. god's god's grace is sufficient for all of our needs for all of us well randy i want to thank you for taking a little time out of your day and uh, and sharing your heart sharing what you do i'm going to put in in the uh the comment section if you're seeing this on facebook or, or YouTube, uh, how you can get a hold of this group. Maybe yeah. they're going to be in your area. How you can follow them for the concerts. How they can, how you could get their products and how you could get their music, their recording artists, so you could get the their information, their their information and their their recordings. More important than that, these guys are on the road a lot, and they need your prayers. That's right. So be praying for Randy and all of the King James boys that God would continue, put his hand upon them, protect them and bless them 
please take the time to pray for them. These, these, boys, these boys need your prayers and you need the practice. So pray that God would just bless them today. Thank you, Randy, for being with us today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. And thank you for coming. And please keep coming back, if you would, for some more Morning Moments.